brothers and sisters, the psalm says, a humble, contrite heart, O God, you will not spurn. Today's reading speaks about the great virtue of humility. The first reading says, the prayers of the humble touch the Lord. They pierce his heart under the most high response by executing judgment to bring justice to the righteous. Indeed, the Lord will not delay. Today's reading from the Gospel of Luke also speaks of humility. As you all heard in the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, the Pharisee judged himself as righteous, viewing others in contempt. At a distance, the tax collector prayed to God, asking for his mercy because he is a sinner. Ashamed of his life, he would not even look up towards heaven. He only beat his breast, such being symbolic of saying, mea culpa. The words of the tax collector echo the words that are found in Psalm 51. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. The necessity to humble oneself is echoed over and over in the Holy Bible. In the first letter of Peter, we read, All of you must clothe yourself with humility in your dealing with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. When Naaman humbled himself, he was able to witness the healing hand of God through the advice of the servant. God asked Solomon what he wanted to have. Solomon, being the humble person that he was, only asked God for wisdom to rule and lead God's people. God was very pleased upon hearing this and granted him wisdom along with all the other things he already possessed. King Manasseh proves the forgiveness of God to those who are humble. Jesus washing the feet of his disciples is the perfect example of humility. Humility is something that is learned, not taught, and only those who know the true beauty of it can understand it. A humble man brings humility wherever he goes and never has to apologize for being just that. Humility is growth and maturity. It is a quality that is important and worth learning when living life. Being humble is what will keep people love in your life. It is what will make you appreciate all of the special moments you come across. Humility is a natural quality of beauty. It is something that you can speak a thousand times on without saying a word. Jesus' crucifixion changed the way people understood greatness and humility. The cross of Christ was contrary to the understanding of greatness in the ancient world. The early Christians realized if the greatest man we have ever known sacrifice his life on the cross, then greatness must consist in willing sacrifice and holding power for the good of others. Pride is the worst capital sin, the root of all sins. And when pride enters the spiritual life, it becomes the worst of all. It is, a bad, to, it is bad to boast about our money, intelligence, and social status. But it is much worse to boast about our own holiness and righteousness. This is called spiritual pride. Jesus has the harshest words against such people, condemning the holier-than-thou attitude of the Jewish leaders of his time. From today's parable, we realize that both Pharisee and tax collector prayed, and uh, Jesus said, the tax collector went to home justified because 
God heard his prayer from his humility. The Pharisee, from his pridefulness, even though he justified himself, God did not hear his prayer. The way to true holiness is humility. It is the most basic foundation of all Christian virtues. It is impossible to be holy without humility. All the saints, without exception, were profoundly humble persons. As one comes closer to God, the true light, the more clearly he sees his own unworthiness and sinfulness. The prayer of the tax collector is the same prayer that the saints utter over and over again. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That is why the saints, despite their holiness of life, make it a point to come to the sacrament of confession almost every day. There are many ways we can practice humility in our daily life, at home, in our workplace, and in our society. Always be grateful for what we have achieved in life. Show gratitude to our parents, spouse, friends, and well-wishers. Gratitude teaches humility. Spend time listening to others. Ask for help when we need it. Look on the bright side of life. Ignore the negative actions of others. Always be polite, and God will be with us. May the Lord Jesus, who humbled himself on the cross, fill us with the grace of humility so that we may become truly pleasing and beautiful in the eyes of God. Brothers and sisters, today we also celebrate World Mission Sunday. The Holy Father urges us to reflect on the theme, You shall be my witness. He emphasizes the call to every Christian to bear witness to Christ, to participate in a mission of universal evangelization, and to seek strength and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Beginning in 1822, the Universal Fund of the Society for the Propagation of the Faith provided some $7 million in help to the new and growing churches in the USA. Your prayers and generous support today sustain priests, religious, and lay pastoral leaders in the mission diocese of Asia, Africa, the Pacific Islands, and parts of Latin America and Europe as they proclaim the gospel, build the church, and serve the poor. Blessed Pauline Jericho began this work 200 years ago. As Pope Francis reminds us, she accepted God's inspiration to establish a network of prayer and collection for missionaries so that the faithful could actively participate in the mission to the ends of the earth. Her vision would lead to World Mission Sunday, which helps the Pope support missionary activity. Today, by joining Blessed Pauline and following her witness, we have the opportunity to help the Universal Church to make Christ present throughout the world, particularly where he has been doubted, ignored, and shunned. May God bless you and those you love for your generous missionary witness as he strengthens and guides missionaries throughout the world. Amen.